What's up guys, Miles here with 9to5Mac, and normally Beats aren't a brand of headphones I ever go near. In fact, I make a conscious effort to avoid them. Uh, in fact, I had never even bought a pair of Beats headphones until today, but the Beats Flex piqued my interest as it's a $50 pair of headphones with the Apple W1 chip, essentially meaning that they'll behave like a pair of AirPods for a third of the price. So let's see how they hold up. The headphones come in a pretty basic box, which isn't surprising for a $50 pair of headphones. The Flex comes with a male to male USB Type-C cable and an extra set of ear tips, and it's going to come with the typical documentation and then a singular beat sticker for you to place inappropriately somewhere. Straight out of the box, you can immediately pair the Flex to a phone just like you would with a pair of AirPods. You just hit the power button on the right ear side, and they should immediately pop up on your iOS device for pairing. And just like with AirPods, you're going to see a custom icon for these in iOS, and even in the battery widget when you've got these connected, which is nice to see. When taking a look around the device itself, we've got some on-device controls, a play button, volume rocker, and a power button, which is pretty surprising to see three buttons on a pair of Apple-owned headphones. Normally, Apple goes for the most minimal approach possible, uh, but it seems they're catering to more traditional headphone users with this pair of Beats Flex. And then next to the play button, there's a microphone, which Apple claims has wind reduction capability. The Beats Flex, even for a $50 pair of headphones, aren't bad in terms terms of design. This really is the age of truly wireless audio, but Beats figured there's still a market uh, for people who don't mind having a cable, which they're correct in doing so. I'd say the majority of people don't mind having a cable on their headphones as long as the overall usability experience is good. And while the Flex isn't using the highest quality materials, they don't feel fragile nor cheap, and it overall feels really nice to wear. The Beats Flex uses magnetized earbuds to make sure the earbuds are never dangling around on your neck. And while this is something we've seen on a million other pairs of earbuds, even at this price point, uh, the Beats Flex uses this to pause and play music. In my opinion, coming from AirPods, uh, using the magnetization to control pause and play uh, just feels slightly awkward, mostly because there's a slight delay uh, that's much more noticeable compared to when you're moving AirPods from your ears. When connecting the earbuds, there's usually a half second or second delay before the music actually stops playing, which is something I pretty much always hear, uh, and this really isn't as severe on the AirPods or AirPods Pro in my testing. I would have much rather preferred if they did it the same same way that the AirPods do, where it just pauses when you remove it from your ear. I feel like that's much more simple, but when you take the price into consideration, it's not something I'm going to complain about a whole lot. Some people prefer the fit and feel of the hard tip design of the standard AirPods. Me? Yeah. I I don't. I do like these though. I like the fit and feel of the Beats Flex a lot. I feel more confident running with these than with any other pair of AirPods I've tried thus far. And if it were possible to go to the gym, but mostly if I wanted to go to the gym, I'd take these with me for sure. Maybe they were called the Flex for people trying to flex muscles. Yeah, probably not. The implementation of USB-C on the Beats Flex is a big win in my book, uh, but it's also another example of how Apple will gladly put USB-C on any product except the iPhone, but that's besides the main point. USB-C implementation is not only a big deal for Apple users, but it's good for Android users as well, who are surely not going to want to go out and spend another $20, $30 on a lightning cable just for their headphones. This makes a lot more sense, especially at this lower price point of $50, you're likely to have a lot more Android users looking at these as a potential pair of daily driver headphones. And with the addition of USB Type-C, Apple's claiming you can get up to 1.5 hours of playback with just a 10 minute charge. So I put that to the test. Uh, I timed it for 10 minutes and I charged it up and it was about 14% after 10 minutes. Uh, I did this a few times and it was consistently uh, at 14 or 15% after 10 minutes. And with 14% battery life, I can get between an hour uh, to an hour and 15 minutes of playback, which is not not 1.5 hours of playback, but it's close, it's, it's good enough. A really nice feature that the Beats Flex supports because of that W1 chip is called Share Audio. This allows you to simply share your audio uh, with any pair of Apple AirPods or Beats headphones with that W1 or H1 chip, and it works as simply as it sounds, and it allows you to control the audio for each individual pair of headphones. This is really great if, let's say, you want to get a pair of Beats Flex for your kids so you can guys can listen to music together or watch movies together. This is something that no other $50 pair of headphones is gonna be able to do. 
And speaking on battery performance as a whole, that's where the Beats Flex really shines in my opinion. Apple claims up to 12 hours of playback on a full charge, and that is pretty dang accurate. Uh, every now and then when reviewing a device, I feel like it's actively fighting me uh, to stay alive when I try to test the battery life, and this is one of those devices. Uh, I used it on and off pretty much all day, blasting music on full volume, uh, and it pretty much stood the test of time. It lasted me all day. The battery life is hands down one of the best features of the Beats Flex, and if you're someone who relies or prioritizes uh, battery life in your headphones, then this is definitely a pair to beat for the $50 asking price. So this is an audio recording using the Beats Flex microphone. I've got it uh, hooked up to my ear, just as I would use it on any normal day. And I'm doing some walking around here. I'm outside um, and it isn't too windy. Quite honestly, the microphone quality is, is trash. It's, it's not good at all. Um, but uh, for $50, I don't think anyone should be expecting anything too great from this pair of headphones. But it seriously does sound like I'm using a laptop from 2005, it's it's that bad. Sound quality is usually never something that comes first uh, in a Beats audio product, and these are no different. Even for the $50 asking price, uh, these just don't sound remarkably good at all. Uh, they don't get very loud, and the overall audio experience is just dull. The mids and highs are kind of tinny, uh, the low end is kind of non-existent, even on tracks that are known to push it very well. There's a crap ton of distortion at high volumes. Long story short, these are not the headphones for the audiophile or the music enthusiast, but in my opinion, Beats headphones never really were, so the flex isn't necessarily telling a new story. But I'll tell you exactly why for the majority of people this might not matter too much. While the Beats Flex offers incredible battery life and really nice comfort for the asking price, it's kind of sad to see that the audio quality is essentially the weakest link in this pair of headphones. But that AirPod-like functionality is gonna have a lot of people drawn to these. Uh, you can seamlessly switch between all of your devices, you just power them on and you're connected. Uh, that functionality is not something you're really gonna get anywhere, at least not for this price. That seamless connectivity and thoughtless functionality can in a lot of ways make up for what's lacking in the audio department. You could easily give these to a child, relative, sibling, or just someone who wants a decent pair of headphones for under 50 bucks. You're not gonna have to show them how to use them. There's gonna be no setup process. Like I said, you just power them on and they're connected. Uh, that kind of functionality is something that a lot of people want nowadays. And a lot of people are gonna put audio quality uh, on the back burner in favor of that functionality. There are dozens, if not hundreds of pairs of headphones for $50 that sound noticeably better than these but you're not going to find a single pair of headphones on earth under $50 that can offer the same functionality as these. That's what makes the Beats Flex special, even if they don't sound great. And so if you want an inexpensive taste of that AirPod experience uh, with little concern for sound quality, then these are definitely a pair to consider. But let me know your thoughts on the Beats Flex in the comments down below. Is this just another pair of Beats headphones? Or do you think this could mean something as far as more headphones implementing the W1 or H1 chip in the future? We'll just have to see. But if you're interested in checking out the Beats Flex, make sure to hit the first link in the description down below and give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you wanna see more content like this. Thank you all for watching and I'll talk to you in the next one.